There's a ton of stuff to go over in this week's update, but I think it's about time we started going over the good, the bad, and the ugly. What's going on, Reefers? Welcome back to another video. My name is Blaine. This is the King Tide Corals channel. Welcome to the King Tide Corals channel. If you guys are new, if you guys aren't, I'm sure you guys are going to really like this video. We're going to be talking about every single tank here on the channel, and we're going to be going over what's been going on. It's been a minute since the last video, and so many things have changed. There's been some good, there's definitely been a lot of bad, and there's been some ugly. So let's go over everything that's been happening, but real quick, just wanna shout all of you guys out. We've hit 2,200 subscribers, so that's amazing. I can't believe we're actually talking about that number. It's an insane amount that we have here on the channel, and I wanna say thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys are new here, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on any future upload. Let's go ahead and cut right to it and check out what's been going on on all the systems here on the channel. All right, Reefers, let's go ahead and start talking about this shallow Pico mangrove tank that I have set up, the UNS 5S. This is definitely some of the good that's been going on here for the channel. This has been really fun to watch this tank develop and I've added a ton of new species of algae. The Calerpa is definitely starting to take over. I've added some blue hypnia, there's some red ogo, there's another species of calerpa in here as well, and there's also some codium I just recently added, but overall this is a really good looking tank and the mangroves are definitely starting to take off. My entire vision for this tank is coming together and I'm really, really happy about it. The one thing I am sad to say though is the Watchman Gobi has disappeared. I Came back from vacation and he was there the first day I was back and then everything was the same the next morning, but there was no watchman. I looked everywhere on my floor, all around, and I just am unable to find him. I looked underneath rocks in the tanks and I just don't believe he's living in here anymore. Sadly, I think he became a little goldfish for either the dog or the cat. So. Rest in peace to that little guy. It was fun to have the yellow watchman, but maybe it's time to look for a little invert that I can add into this tank. I know I tried the Lima shrimp before, but I'm thinking of something a little bit more active and something that we're gonna see all the time throughout the day. But this is definitely one tank that's had a lot of good success in the past couple weeks. Let's talk about the lobster lair. This is definitely one of the good things currently going on for the channel. I would say Sebastian is probably one of my favorite residents in the office just because of his awesome quirky little attitude. But this tank is really fun too. Uh, the macro tank, the UNS 5N is probably one of my favorite tank sizes and I really do enjoy it so much that I grabbed a second, haven't done anything with it yet, but I really, really like this tank and its dimensions and its size and I think it's created a really fun wildscape. As you guys know, I like the natural look, but this is definitely to the point where it needs some trimming, but I think that'll happen in the near future. As of right now, I'm really enjoying the wild look that it has. I've added a couple new species of macroalgae to the tank, and I think adding a couple more splashes of color is really helpful. It has a ton of red in it now, as you can see, but it's nice to add in a little bit of green and a splash of blue. Overall, this tank has been a ton of fun. It's kind of in a great cycle now, and it's just kind of on auto drive, and I'm just enjoying it. It's really been a joy to feed Sebastian. If you guys are looking for a fun new addition to a small nano tank, I think a purple reef lobster as his own residency is a really fun animal to keep and try out. So definitely recommend them. And if you guys have any purple reef lobsters yourself, let me know down below. I'm really interested to hear about how everyone else's reef lobster acts and how it does in a reef system if you have it with a bunch of other things. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the lobster lair. It definitely looks really great and it's one of my favorite systems here in the office. The other tank that's definitely some good news is the basslet tank. This tank has definitely kind of gotten grown out and become quite the little jungle but the fish is doing well and all the corals seem super happy. Also the mangroves in the back are really happy, but there's definitely some things that are wrong with this tank. Not everything's perfect and I'm gonna let you guys know that right now. So there is lots of bubble algae that we currently are dealing with and also our friends Aptasia. So 
I have two of probably the worst pests in the hobby all hanging out in one tank, but overall the tank looks pretty good. I'm liking how it's grown over the macroalgae with the Gorgonian and the softies look really great together, but I am sad to say that I have bubble algae in here and quite the aptasia problem. So this will definitely be part of my upcoming bubble algae regime cleanup and video series. So it's gonna be fun to definitely watch this as we try to recover this tank from all of the pests. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. And the two desks or the two tanks by my desk are the ones doing the best. So cheers to these two tanks. Let's go ahead and move on to some of the bad. The next project I wanna talk about is the mangrove bowl. Now I'm not saying the mangrove bowl is in a really bad state, but there's definitely some problems going on that I need to figure out. And it's definitely, I would consider a bad situation. So currently right now we have some browning of the leaves that's occurring. Um, I can't really pinpoint it, what exactly is going on, but I've been losing a lot of leaves on my mangrove. It's not like they're yellowing or anything of that sort. They're basically browning out. So recently what I did was I shifted it from over here. It was hanging out on this side. I've shifted it over here. I was worried that potentially the window maybe was magnifying too much sun and it was crisping up the leaves and actually burning them. So what I decided to do was shift it over, but I think what I really wanna do is I wanna hit the reset button on this mangrove bowl and start cleaning it out and starting things over. I think maybe there's potentially too many mangroves in here. I will say they're hard to the touch, so that's a good sign. None of them are squishy, so that's a really good thing for mangrove health, but I can't pinpoint why I'm losing leaves. If you guys know, maybe drop a comment down below and maybe we can figure this out together. What I do wanna do is pull all the substrate out. I wanna get all the macroalgae out, clean this thing out, and I wanna pull maybe a couple of these mangroves out and set them off to the side. And I just wanna completely restart this bowl and maybe be able to figure out what's been going on with my mangroves. These are my oldest trees, so I wanna treat them as nice as possible and make sure that they make it okay. So I'm really gonna be definitely making a couple of videos or just a video about when I restart this bowl and get everything back online. But that's basically the start of some of the bad that's been happening around the channel. All right, guys, let's start talking about some of the ugly. I'm going to try to make this quick and as easy as possible, but basically all the corals in here are doing pretty good, all pretty happy. The mangroves that I have are growing out good and starting to get them acclimated to salt water. But as for fish in this tank, we are fishless. We're actually running fallow because we ended up running into ick or some sort of parasite disease and ended up killing everything off. Um, my yellow tang went first, sadly, and then I took the clowns and the whitetail coal tang out, put them in QT, but that wasn't enough, and I was unable to save them. Um, I tried my best. I hate losing fish. I've talked about this before in the past. It's one of my least favorite things in the hobby is whenever you lose something, it's really sad. You know, any kind of living thing is always a bummer losing, but fish, for some reason, to me, they're like dogs, I love them so much. And so it's been a huge bummer lately with all of my fish loss. As you guys heard earlier in the video, I lost my yellow watchman goby. And so we're kind of fishless here on the channel. Um, no fish in here. Um, there's no fish in the desk tank. There's only the basslet in the Innovative Marine 10. And then we're gonna be talking about the fish situation here soon with the lagoon. But wanted to give you guys all updated on what's been going on with the frag tank. I'm really happy about everything. There is no leaks as of yet. We'll keep knocking on wood. Um, the chiller that I've recently added has been huge. Um, I'll probably talk about that in a future video, but man, without this chiller, I would be in huge trouble. This garage that I'm in gets flipping hot. It's the summertime out here in Sacramento Valley and man, it gets hot, but this tank stays at a sweet 78.1 at pretty much all times throughout the day. So that chiller is kicking butt. I got to say shout out to one of the local guys out here. I snagged it from, um, it works great. It's been huge for me and it's been helping me with aquaculture and my softies. I will say this cold coral is insane. Um, it's gotten to the top of the water line and it's bigger than one of my hands. Uh, so that's pretty insane. And I have a lot of really awesome toadstools that I'm cooking right now. 
that you guys hopefully will be seeing in the near future. Overall though, lots of bad things going down for the frag tank. Hopefully we can get things turned around. We're on, God, I think it's week three now of the fallow period. So keep your fingers crossed. We can keep it going. Make sure no other fish gets sick here in the frag tank. But for now, we'll dose nutrients and ghost feed this and make sure all the corals are fat and happy. The last tank to talk about on our schedule is the lagoon. As you guys are seeing now, the lagoon has changed quite a bit. There is no more light hanging from a arm. It's actually now hanging from the ceiling. All the mangroves that were in the back of the display are now in the actual display itself. There is no more lid. We've pulled off the auto feeder and we've made quite the change to the scape. I will say every single time you're thinking about making large changes to your scape, think about it. Are you sure that this is something you want to do? Because after I ended up doing these changes and making all these adjustments, I'm not entirely sure about how I like the tank. I want to hear from you guys what you feel about the scape and everything here in this system, but I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if I'm happy with it, happy with how it's turned out. I know there's a lot of things that are going to be changing here over the course of the next couple weeks. We have a new light that we're going to be adding, an upgrade if you will. We have some fish that are going to be coming in a couple weeks and hopefully some of these minor changes are going to help kickstart my love for the lagoon again. I will say since I lost everything in the tank and when we originally moved down here, this tank has not been the same. I haven't felt the same love for it since I originally had it up in Seattle and you guys had seen the first rendition of the lagoon or that rendition of the lagoon, but that was one of my favorite and I'm really bummed that I've lost it. Let's talk about some of the things that are going on inside the lagoon. Something that's definitely happening is we have quite the bubble algae problem. We're definitely starting to see quite a bit pop up. It's all over the rock work. I've been working on manually removing it and I'm thinking about enlisting a crab army to start working on it. I don't want to do a ton of them, but I'm thinking going on reef cleaners and actually getting the bubble algae efficiently eating emeralds would be the best move and grabbing a couple of those and tossing them in. I haven't been able to kind of put my, you know, head totally towards getting this tank right for bubble algae. But what I'm going to be doing in the next couple weeks is setting up a really fun video series talking with some other reefers that have influenced me in the hobby and maybe influenced you as well and seeing what their usual strategy is to getting rid of bubble algae if they have an outbreak in a tank. I think it'll be a really fun series and I think it's going to be very helpful for a lot of reefers. I know I need the help in the tank right now. I need help in here and I also need help over here. So there's a couple tanks that we can work on this with and it's going to be fun to try out some different things. Overall though, the corals are doing pretty good. Um, the levers are super happy. Remy's weeping willow is growing good. Um, this Colorado sunburst is definitely happy to be out of the cage and things seem overall fairly happy. I definitely need to get some fish in here and get some nutrients going because with all the mangroves, the macroalgae and the soft corals, it's definitely a pretty nutrient heavy system. I will say though, overall, I'm happy with the lagoon, but some things need to change and I want to make sure that I kind of spark myself again with this tank. I was in love with this tank when it was up in Seattle and I think it's about time again to fall back in love. I'm really happy you guys were able to hear all these updates about what's been going on with the tanks here on the King Type Corals channel. Well, that's the update on the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you guys have any more questions that I didn't get to on the updates in my systems, feel free to drop them down in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. I'm always looking around, checking out the comments, and I appreciate you guys engaging on all of my videos. It's really fun to talk with you guys and start some banter as well. I really enjoy it. I want to say thank you guys for staying till this point of the video. If you guys have tuned in this long, you guys are the real ones. I know there's a lot of fish loss that have occurred over the past couple weeks, but we will rebuild. We will get some more fish, we'll get uh, a QT process going, or we'll be buying from reliable QT sources, and we'll make sure that we don't run into something like that again. I don't have to run that frag tank fallow all the time. So let's go ahead, wipe that off the board, say that we've done it, and we'll go ahead, figure out what's gonna be best for us in the future. Thanks again guys for tuning in this week and until the next update, happy reefing.